A bow is a simple ranged weapon, right? Right? It might seem that way, but in GURPS bows can be very complex. This is going to be a long video, because there's a lot that has to be covered, or at least mentioned, so bear with me. I am going to explain everything bow related in GURPS. Bow is an average difficulty skill that doesn't have any specialties. Or does it? GURPS High Tech introduces a slingshot specialty at TL7. If your low tech world has an alchemical equivalent of rubber, then this specialty might appear much earlier. I doubt that it will upset the balance. To start off, let's take a look at the weapon table in GURPS Low Tech. This table only has six bows. A half of them appears at TL0. The bow is a very ancient invention. As you can see, they deal decent damage, have decent accuracy, decent range, aren't heavy, take 2 seconds to reload, and their strength requirement is manageable. Cost ranges from cheap to very expensive, and bulk is very high. Harsh realism for ranged weapons from page 75 of GURPS Low Tech suggests giving cheap bows a malfunction value and to have the accuracy of all bows, rounding it down. Of all these bows, the tubular bow needs a special mention. It is effectively rugged. It has plus 2 HD and DR7. GURPS Low Tech Companion 2 has DR and HP values for all the bows. Plus, it has rules for cutting the bowstring with a well-aimed attack. GURPS Fantasy Folk Elves has two new bows. The Elven War Bow, that is of fine quality and shoots silently, and the Sea Bow, that is made of waterproof materials and hence can be used underwater. Normal bows cannot be used underwater, but they can be made of waterproof materials for twice the price, according to Pyramid 4 4. GURPS Dungeon Fantasy 12 Ninja has the Han Q which is identical to the short bow, but can fit into a loose sleeve. It costs $100. You cannot really use a bow in melee, but it can be used to parry like a light club. However, parrying just once with a bow will ruin it as a bow. This probably does not apply to the tubular bow. GURPS Dungeon Fantasy 11 power-ups has the Bow Fencer power-up that allows the user to parry with a bow without damaging it. Looks simple enough, but now I have to introduce the concept of rated strength. Each bow has a rated strength that determines its range and damage. It's not the same as the minimum strength requirement you can see on the table. The strength requirement determines the minimum rated strength for the bow model, the maximum rated strength for a bow model equals to this requirement multiplied by 3. So, even though damage is listed as modified thrust damage value and range is given in multiples of strength, you do not actually use your strength value to determine them. You use the strength of the bow instead. The bow's strength does not affect its weight or weight of arrows. Weaker users still can shoot the stronger bow, but will suffer minus one to skill per each point of strength they lack, and lose an identical number of FP if the fight lasts long enough to tire you out. Even though they have lower strength than the bow they are using, they deal damage using the bow's strength. It is compensated by these penalties. On the other hand, if you are stronger than the bow, you still cannot deal more damage than the bow strength would allow. To make things super clear, let's illustrate it. We have a regular bow with a rated strength of 12. A character with strength 10 will be able to use it. He will deal damage using the bow's strength 12, but will be at minus 2 to skill and will lose 2 FP when the fight ends. A character with strength 12 will deal damage using the bow's strength 12 with no penalties. A character with strength 15 will still deal damage with the bow's strength 12 and will suffer no penalties. Europe Slow Tech says on page 74 that if you are using a foot bow, a bow built to be braced with both feet, then your effective strength is 
20 to 30 percent higher. Also, I should say that bows use arm strength and striking strength for the purpose of being drawn, not lifting strength. This might sound counter to you, but it's mostly a game balance thing. If you are using the deadly spring article, then it is replaced by lifting strength. I should also mention the strong bow perk that appears in many places. This one lets you increase your effective strength for the purpose of drawing the bow, if your bow skill is high enough. If you are playing an archer, you really should take it, it's very good. Let's explore the ammunition choices. A normal arrow that deals impaling damage costs $2. At TL3 and higher, arrows may have armor-piercing botkin points. This changes damage from impaling to piercing and adds an armor divider of 2, but does not affect cost or weight. GURPS basic set has rule for improvised flaming arrows on page 410. These require an oil or fat soaked cloth and 10 seconds to prepare, and must be used within 3 seconds of preparation. They give minus 2 to hit but deal 1 point of burning damage as a linked effect. GURPS fantasy folk elves says that a water resistant arrow costs $4. On page 73 of GURPS low tech, you can find more variant ammunition – barbed arrows, blunt arrows, cutting arrows, barbed cutting arrows, fire arrows, fire cage arrows, flight arrows, and humming bulb arrows. This selection of ammunition makes bows significantly more versatile. If you remember my video on knives, you probably remember that arrows can be used in melee with the knife skill. Yorks Dungeon Fantasy XI power-ups has the Bow Fencer power-up that allows the wielder to use arrows as melee weapons much more effectively. Also, remember that ammunition is quite cheap. You can apply fine or very fine quality modifiers to get plus 1 or plus 2 to damage. Also, you can have balanced arrows that give plus 1 to skill and a balanced bow that gives plus 1 to accuracy. Now, let's talk about how bows are used in combat and what interesting tricks and techniques are available. For a bow, raiding an arrow takes a second, but a fast draw arrow roll makes this instantaneous. Drawing the bow by hand takes another second. Shooting takes a second. A leg-powered bow takes 3 seconds to draw, plus 3 seconds to crouch or lie down and place one foot on the bow, 4 seconds for both feet. If a foot bowman stays on the ground, subsequent cycles need only 2 seconds to place the feet. Ammo rating and shooting times do not change. If you come from the D&D background, you will probably be frustrated with how slow the bows are. After all, in D&D you could fire many shots per round. Fortunately, GURPS martial arts has rule for quick shooting bows on page 119. An archer who has already drawn an arrow can try to ready and shoot his bow in one smooth motion. This requires an attack or all-out attack determined maneuver. A heroic archer may instead choose move and attack. And this calls for two bow rolls at minus 6. For anyone all out attack determined adds plus 1 to both rolls. Heroic archer halves these penalties, and weapon master halves them again. Heroic archer is a new advantage in GURPS martial arts. This is something like gunslinger, but for archers. There are many benefits, I will not list them all. The first role is to draw the bow. Success lets the archer ready his bow instantly and shoot at once. Failure means he readies his bow too slowly to attack this turn, but can shoot at no special penalty on a later turn. Critical failure means he drops his bow. The second row is to shoot. This is only possible if the first row succeeds. Treat this as an ordinary ranged attack, but with the extra penalty above. Thus, if you precede the quick shooting attempt with a successful fast draw roll to ready an arrow instantly, you will be able to shoot every turn. GURPS Martial Arts also has new rules that might be relevant to archers. First, it has rules for using fast draw to draw multiple arrows at once. 
Second, it has rules for using fast draw in awkward positions, which might come into play when using a football. Third, it has optional rules for prediction shots and ranged feints. Prediction shots basically are ranged deceptive attacks, and ranged feints are ranged feints. I suggest being careful with these two rules. For example, prediction shots for bows might be okay, but do not even think about allowing this rule in ultra tech games. Personally, I do not use these at all. You can use the dual weapon attack option with a bow if you have two arrows ready. This way you can target one target twice or attack two different targets. GURPS tactical shooting limits this to a 30 degree angle. In cinematic games you can improve this application with a technique. For cinematic archers, GURPS basic set has the Zen archery skill that allows you to mitigate range penalties. There are some techniques that can be used with bows. GURPS martial arts has close combat and mounted shooting. GURPS fantasy had chariot archery, shoot backward and shoot over mount. Jason Levine, also known as PK, has another technique for archers on his website, Instant Shot. I will link it in the description. GURPS Dungeon Fantasy XI power-ups has the Quick Shot power-up. If you deconstruct it, you will be able to get a technique that lets you buy off the quick shooting penalty. Pyramid 361 also has two perks for archers – Flawless Knocking and Flawless Fast Draw. Finally, GURPS Fantasy Folk Elves has the underwater archery technique that lets you buy off a penalty for using bows underwater. That doesn't actually exist. So this technique is useless. Speaking of using bows underwater, there are rules for that in Pyramid 326, but some of them were reprinted in GURPS martial arts Earth fighting styles and GURPS fantasy folk elves. Normal bows and arrows cannot be used at all unless made of waterproof materials or properly enchanted. Ranges are divided by 10 and damage is halved. Shots through the water surface also suffer from refraction across the boundary, add a minus 4 penalty to hit. Maybe the underwater archery technique was meant to buy off this penalty? I don't know. GURPS Lowtech describes two accessories for bows that enable some interesting options. The first one is the arrow guide that allows you to shoot lighter ammo that can be reused against you by enemies who lack similar equipment. You fasten or hold this gutter-like accessory in place and launch short, unfeathered darts down it. Any type of bow may use an arrow guide. Its darts have a flatter trajectory than arrows, but are lighter. This gives plus 1 to accuracy and minus 1 to damage. Change the reload time to 3 seconds. The dart must be first grasped and then placed into the groove before drawing the bow. Other stats are unchanged. The arrow guide costs $50 and weighs half a pound. A dart costs half a dollar and weighs three hundredths of a pound. The second device is a punja gun. A fastener that fastens together five arrows, allowing them to be knocked and fired as one. Once launched, the arrows would separate. A punja gun costs ten dollars and has a negligible weight. This reduces the bow's range and accuracy, as well as the arrow's hitting power. A group of 5 arrows gives minus 2 to hit, minus 2 to damage, half range, and rate of fire 1 times 5. Reloading time is normal, but fast draw arrow attempts to draw clusters of arrows are at minus 3, in addition to any other penalties. Trick shooters were known to fire as many as 10 arrows this way. There is no evidence that this was ever done in battle, but the GM may wish to let cinematic archers try. This gives minus 4 to hit, minus 4 to damage, half range and rate of fire 1 times 10. Thus, if you are planning to use this device, you will have to familiarize yourself with the shotgun rules. You are probably waiting for me to mention the Deadly Spring, an article from Pyramid 333. So let's talk about it. This article is not for players, but for the GMs. And not for just for any GM but for a GM who is willing to dive deep into the mathematics 
and physics behind both to design your own. You will see very scary formulae that have absolutely incomprehensible concepts such as cube root and square root. But jokes aside, even the article suggests using a spreadsheet, so if you're planning to design both, just open up Microsoft Excel. Even though most of the physics used in this article are known to me, I have never used it. However, I really appreciate this article's existence. I can imagine a person getting inspired by all this and making a list of custom-made bows and arrows, especially if he could come up with numbers for fictional materials, such as dragon bone. That could be fun. I guess that for the sake of completionism, I have to mention that GURPS Hightech has compound bows and Pyramid 396 has an article about ultratech bows. And that's finally it. As you can see, archery is not that simple in GURPS. On the other hand, this amount of detail might make playing an archer more satisfying to you. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.